Hi everyone, welcome back to Osteosarcoma. Welcome back, you ask. So if you're watching this video, I want to make sure that you know about a couple of other blogs that I have on osteosarcoma. So be sure to check out part one where I give you an overview of bone cancer in dogs. And then be sure to check out, I have a whole separate video about amputation. In this vlog, we're gonna be focusing on treatment. Clearly, she does not wanna be in her area. Crazy dog. What are you doing? Hi. Ready for your exam? Okay. Oh, I love her. You're not Fallon. What? You ready to go home? We're almost there. So Fallon finished chemo about a month ago, and she obviously had osteosarcoma, and she was amputated, and she did great on chemo, and we have to wait for the radiologist, but I'm very pleased. I do not see any spread, no spread allowed. And then hopefully at your next appointment, we're gonna start that new osteosarcoma vaccine. Yeah? So we have the battlefront of the tumor growing in the bone, what I call the local battlefront, and then we have that systemic battlefront. So if we're thinking about curative intent, we have to deal with both of those battlefronts. Typically, for the local battlefront, we are gonna be do combining amputation for the tumor in the bone combined with something systemic, which is most commonly chemotherapy. And now we are gonna talk about some of the new immunotherapies that are in clinical trials right now, which is really super exciting. There are some alternatives to amputation. And so I do wanna to touch on those as well because there are some limb spare does limb spare mean? It means we're sparing the limb for your dog. And there are some surgical techniques. Specifically, those typically be, are for the distal radius, for the bone right above the, the carpus, the wrist in the dog, where they'll remove that segment of bone. There's some requirements. Uh, and they'll either plate it and put in um, a replacement for that. That's usually the best location for a limb spare. And then sometimes we can do stereotactics of this very precise form of radiation. Again, there usually can't be too much bone destruction from the tumor. So there are many people that used to come see me when I was at a facility that had stereotactic radiation, but the bone was too destroyed from the tumor that they wouldn't be good candidates for radiation because if we killed the, the tumor with the radiation, they would still fracture. So, you know, if you don't want to amputate and you want to investigate these limb spare, talk to your veterinarian about getting a referral to a medical oncologist or a surgeon or a radiation facility. Usually starting with a medical oncologist is gonna be a good place. But again, most of the time, it's gonna be the combination of amputation plus chemotherapy is gonna be the treatment options. And we're gonna come back to that. But I do wanna to touch on some of the palliative options. What does palliative mean? Palliative means for comfort. And so palliative could be just amputation. And that's still great, guys, because you're taking away the source of pain for your dog. It's not gonna cure them because of that high spread rate, because 90%, as I mentioned in the last video, 90% of dogs have micro spread to the lungs. So by doing amputation, great. You're removing the source of pain for your dog, but it will usually succumb to the cancer spreading. How long will they live? Usually with amputation alone, the average median survival is about four to five months. I've been posting about this all month on Facebook and someone just said, my dog's out you know, a year and we didn't do anything after surgery. Fabulous. There will always be exceptions to the rule and I live for those statistic busters that do better than the statistics. But again, statistically, amputation alone, about four to five months. Another option, if you want palliative, is to do palliative radiation. So not the stereotactic radiation, but radiation usually weekly for three or four treatments. So once a week to a radiation facility, they give a type of radiation that's gonna induce uh, pain relief, promote pain relief, uh, allow your pet to get off some of their oral pain medications, which is great and has been shown to help strengthen the bone a little as well. Some radiation facilities will do two treatments on back-to-back -back days. We call that the boom-boom technique. There are also these things called bisphosphonates, really long word. Uh, the main one that we're using in dogs is the lidronate. It's a once a week pain injection that you use on top of the other pain medications that has been shown to decrease their pain levels as well. So I can do that in combination with their radiation and chemotherapy as well, and then oral pain medication. So four main things that I think about as palliative options, amputation alone, 
palliative radiation, the bisphosphonate, specifically zelidronate, uh, the trade name Zomita, but it's now generic, which is nice because it's less expensive, and oral pain medications. Remember, with oral pain medications, guys, most of these dogs will need multiple different pain medications that have different mechanisms of action. So often we'll use a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory with something like gabapentin and sometimes with tramadol because, again, these tumors hurt. That's why if you can do amputation as a palliative treatment option, that often is a good thing. Okay, so now let's talk about curative intent. So remember, you know, please watch the other video all about amputation because that's going to really talk more about the decision-making process. There's lots of videos in there of my different patients and how well they do and, you know, how satisfied most owners are. So that is to remove the tumor and then we're typically going to follow that up with chemotherapy and the goal is to delay the metastasis, again, with the most common place, typically the lungs, bone is the second most common location. Chemotherapy is well tolerated in dogs. I encourage you to go to the Everything You Need to Know About playlist and watch uh, some of the videos about chemotherapy and some of the other videos about my patients and see these dogs wagging their tail and how well they do during chemotherapy. Chemotherapy specifically for osteosarcoma has been shown to increase Increase their survival times and their disease-free interval. So it prolongs that period until we start to see metastasis. My motto, guys, is live longer, live well. So the goal is not just for them to have a longer survival time, but for them to be living well, not only when they're done with chemotherapy, but during treatment as well. At this point, at the time of this video, the current chemotherapy of choice is a drug called carboplatin, typically given every three weeks for a total of six treatments. Some, you know, about four to five to six, I personally give it six treatments. So six doses of carboplatin every three weeks apart. Typically chemotherapy is gonna be started about two weeks after amputation. So once that incision is healed. We don't wait too long, we wanna get chemotherapy started. So what I typically recommend is when you book that appointment for amputation and your dog is recovering, that is a great time to call and get an appointment with an oncologist if you haven't yet seen them, or if you have, you wanna make that appointment with an oncologist. Cause sometimes we're booked a couple of weeks out and you don't wanna call when the sutures are out and say, hey, I need an appointment to start chemotherapy. So we kind of need to plan these things. And that's one of the points of these videos is that you're going to say, okay, I know that I need to start chemotherapy about two weeks after surgery. I'm going to get an appointment with an oncologist or a couple days after surgery when my dog's recovering, let's go talk to an oncologist and find out if chemotherapy is right for us. Maybe get some estimates about cost and things like that, because those are things that you really need to do one-on-one -on -one with your oncologist and find out if it's you know something that works for your family. What's really exciting is that there is some immunotherapy that is being developed for dogs with osteosarcoma. And so chemo, carboplatin, the drug that I've been mentioning, and the traditional chemotherapy that we use to treat many cancers in dogs and cats and people, that chemotherapy kills cancer cells, which is great. That's the goal. But immunotherapy is a little bit different. What it's doing is it's going to boost the immune system. It is going to use the immune system through some of the different immune system cells and then target something in the immunotherapy that is hopefully going to kill the cancer cells. So the immunotherapy that we're using for the canine osteosarcoma vaccine is a listeria vaccine. So it's a modified listeria vaccine that expresses HER2 nu. And that's the target that we're using. And this HER2 nu is something that's overexpressed in dogs with osteosarcoma. And we're gonna manipulate the, manipulate the immune system and hopefully kill those cancer cells. So it's really exciting. And there are some studies that are being done by Dr. Nicola Mason at uh, University University of Pennsylvania and it looks like that dogs that had amputation plus chemotherapy and then the immunotherapy so they still get chemo but that it's very much improving their survival times so there's now multi-site clinical trials going on in the US about 20 sites one of the hospitals I previously worked at was there so I do have some personal experience with the vaccine you'll want to you know talk to your oncologist find out where they are see if you can travel you do have to go to those facilities looks like it's significantly improving the survival times and what I'm really hopeful is that once these clinical trials come out and we have more data this will be something that is approved for dogs and that we'll be able to get from all oncologists 
couple of things, just sort of housekeeping things when you talk to your oncologist. So chemotherapy, dogs are at the clinic maybe an hour, hour and a half, depending on how your oncologist has it set up. For the immunotherapy, they are there all day. They get fluids before the infusions of the immunotherapy is only over 30 minutes, um, but then they are monitored all day, sometimes around fluids and their blood pressure and everything. So they are there. They can get a, a transient low-grade fever afterwards. So it does look like um, the dogs that are getting it are out over a thousand days, which is really a significant improvement in survival time. All right, so let's wrap up with a common question that I get for dogs with osteosarcoma. Doc, what's the prognosis for my dog? And so this is a very treatable cancer and dogs that are treated definitely live longer than dogs who are not treated. And the more treatment they get, typically the better they do and treatment is very well tolerated. Sadly, most dogs will succumb to the the effects of the tumor and typically the metastasis if they have the amputation, again, with lungs being the most common place that it spreads. So here's a breakdown. And again, these are statistics and statistics will not predict how your dog individually will do, but they give you a general overview and a guideline. For dogs that just have amputation, uh, the median survival time is about four to five months, and only about 10% of dogs are alive out one year, and about 2% of dogs will live two years. So there are some dogs that are out two years long-term survivors. Dogs that get amputation in general, when I say local, that could be stereotactic radiation or limb spare, but again, we're going to, for what most dogs are getting, so amputation plus platinum chemotherapy, carbo, Median survival is about a year, about 10 to 12 months. 50% of the dogs are alive at one year, so significant improval than 10%. And about 15 to 25% of the dogs are alive at two years. So great, but significant improvement. I want dogs to do better. And again, hopefully that's where the immunotherapy will improve that. Palliative uh, therapy, so palliative radiation, median survival time is about four to five months because again, that's only dealing with the pain at the primary place that the tumor is growing. You can talk to your cancer specialist about adding chemotherapy and other pain medications like zelidronate, the bisphosphonates, uh, but there's limited reports on how that will improve their survival times, but I will do that on a case-by-case -case basis uh, with each individual family. And finally, for some of the early studies coming out on the canine osteosarcoma vaccine, the reason that we're so excited in the dogs that uh, were vaccinated, their disease-free interval, so when they first started to see, see disease progression, was about 600 days, so a little short of uh, two years, and the median survival time was 950 days. 78% one-year survival rate and a 67% two-year survival rate. So again, this is based on small numbers of dogs and that's why it'll be very exciting when we start to see some of the data come out from the multi-site study of you know about 22 sites in the US. But again, it's one of the reasons I'm really excited and I think it could be really great to, you know, for dogs to have amputation, chemotherapy, and then the immunotherapy as well. Maybe they'll be able to get less chemo and then the immunotherapy, but very, very exciting. So what I want you to think about osteosarcoma is that it's a very treatable cancer. I know that it is a very emotional cancer for a lot of pet owners. I think the decision to amputate is really traumatic. I think that owners that do it are really happy that they did and a lot of owners that struggled with it wish they knew how well their dog would do you know, at the time because they really, really struggle with the decision. Chemotherapy tends to be very, very well tolerated. I find that most owners that treat are very happy that they did. I hope that you found this information helpful. If you did, please comment, please share. And remember, we're all here together. Oh guys, couple of resources. I mentioned this in the amputation video as well. Tripods.com is a great community of three-legged dogs. Uh, I hope you can check out my Facebook page as well, but I really hope this information has helped you. Let's all kick cancer's butt together. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next time.